welcome back to Avo Tutorials. Today I am back with another Google Sheet automation. It is also about sending emails, but this time in this video, I will be showing you how to send two different emails from the same Google Sheet. The previous video over here was just sending one email, one type of email with the same body, same content to um, the email address that is being referenced. This time around, we will be sending two different emails. This is a scenario whereby a company wants to track all their interviews and their candidates. So the first email that will be referenced to column D will be sending an email to, let's say, um, a secretary to schedule an interview. For example, a company shortlisted Charlie for the data analyst position and the hiring manager wants to um, inform his or her secretary to schedule a second interview with Charlie. So when this is checked, you can see that an email comes into the secretary's email box. Um, it will say, Hi Eddie, Charlie Long is approved to move to the next phase of interviews as a data analyst. Please contact the candidate to schedule the second round of interview. So this is the first email. Now, once the secretary has, you know, liaised with Charlie and already arranged on a date and time for the interview, for example, here is 20th of April at 11 a.m. Once the secretary types this in and, you know, and check this, with a, when the timestamp comes in, meaning that the email has already been sent. So this second email is emailing to the hiring manager. And you can see that an email came in and it says Chai Long second interview confirmed. And for example, the bot, the hiring manager's name is Avo. Hi Avo, Chai Long is confirmed for second interview on Saturday, April 20th, 11 a.m. Um, Singapore Standard Time as a data analyst. Thank you. So all of that will be done through this Google Sheet. And before I jump into the code, um, for those of you who are just interested to use this template and not, you know, dive into how the coding works, all you have to do is to go to File, make a copy of the sheet, make a copy. Once you have made the copy of the sheet, then go to Extensions, App Script. Uh, under App Script, you need to make sure you change up the email. So, for example, now the first email, um, I have put it to bamhammers at gmail.com example is this was to my secretary so then you can just change up the email address with the recipient for the first email then the second email here on line 57 you also need to update this as well to your um the hiring manager's email in uh in our case so you just need to change up this to line of code change up the email addresses then once you're done click save and then click run okay when you click run it's going to come up with an error yeah so when you click run an authorization um, note comes up this pop-up you will need to review the permissions and you will need to choose an account where you want this script to run on so I'll be choosing my main account over here and then click advanced. Continue only if you understand the risk. Yes, go to send this sheet over here and then click continue. Click allow. Okay, awesome. Now don't worry about this error. The code will still run um, even with that error. Just make sure that both email addresses here have been updated and then once you're done, you can just head back to this and then you can just test out and see whether the sheet works. Um, yeah, for those of you who are interested in diving into the code a little bit, now let's get into it. Okay, um, same step, you just have to go extensions, click app script, then when you click on it, it should open up the script. So the first part of this code here where it says lot object to prevent concurrent executions, this has been added to the code. Um, you will probably won't see this in my previous video. And the reason why I added this in is because 
I realized uh, the old code, some people were receiving multiple emails, um, even with just one edit from the Google Sheet. So this is just to make sure that the whole thing only runs once. It creates like a lock object that prevent multiple instances from the function from running simultaneously. Um, and it's like uh, in layman terms, having like a key to a room that only allows one person inside at a time. And then the second part of the code over here when it says on edit. So this function is triggered whenever there is an edit made to the Google Sheets document. So of course, the edit function will only be triggered um, towards the cells that you have targeted. So in our, in our case, would be column D and F because those two are the triggers to sending an email. So you definitely need to introduce the on edit function into the code. And then, um, so the code over here, it will first try to acquire a lock to ensure that only one instance of the function runs at a time, and if it can't um, acquire the lock within five seconds, it will return immediately. And then after that, it will check to see if an edit um, event has already been processed. So if there's no edit done to the Google Sheet, nothing will happen, but it will also check and see if um, the edited cell, it will check and see whether your targeted cells have been edited. If yes, then it will run the code. Okay. Next one is let sheet. Uh, basically, this let sheet over here is identifying the sheet that you want um, the code to run on. So I understand there are some people who would have like multiple sheets, sheet 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on. But if you want the code to only run based on all the information that you have in sheet 1, you need to make sure that you change up the sheet name over here. So here is sheet 1. If so happen, you duplicate the sheet and you name it um, something like worksheet. Oops, you name here like worksheet one. Then you have to make sure that you are changing this also to worksheet one. If not, if you don't do this, the code won't work. All right, so let's go back. Okay. And then next one is extracting the information about the edited cell. So basically, you are giving a function to and calling it a name. So when you call out range, meaning that you want the system to know that it's a range that has been edited. If it's row, then you want to know which row number um, of the edited cell. Same goes with COL, which stands for column. Cell value is the value, get value of the edited cell. So this sets up like a, a foundation for you before you can actually indicate your target cells um, for the code to run on. So this part of the code here, you don't have to change. The one that you really need to change is this next one. Check if the edit occurred in column 4 and the value is true. The reason why it's column 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, so column D is column 4 as well, it's our trigger point. So when this has been checked, then you will know that the email needs to be sent out. So it's a trigger. Um, so you COL, meaning calling out the column that has been edited. Remember, this is referencing back to what you have created earlier on. So column number four and the cell value must be equals to true. So why is it true? It's because when there is a check mark, you can see that the formula bar here is true, right? So when it's unchecked, you can see that it's false. So the system um, understands the code by true and false instead of whether it's checked or not. Then you're telling the system to get the relevant data from specific cells in the same row. So let name a dynamic row on column three. So you can see column three, one, two, three here, column C, but it's dynamic. So meaning whichever, um, Whichever row that you have marked the checkbox to be true, it, that is your active row. It will dynamically follow where your checkbox is. So in this instance, for example, um, row 3, then it will grab the information Bob Jackson. But if you are checkmark here on row 2, then it will grab the information Charlie Long and data analysis. Data analyst. Yeah. And then title... It will be row and two because the position, row and two over here, second column. 
and then last but not least would be the email this is the recipient of the first email um, just make sure you update this in my case would be my Hamas email then the next line of code would be get the email address of the active user meaning the person who owns this sheet the person who is using to run the code on that is the active person's email so you just need to make sure you add this in meaning the email will come from the active user's email so for example in my case the active user here is kfkyyan so meaning i am the one kfkyyan is going to be sending out the email to bamhamas at gmail.com okay timestamp is basically getting the time and date of when the email is going to be sent next part you will also want to change it up so you can construct the email body we have to use the let email body function over here and then equals and anything in red here are all string it's all a string it's all text you can update it however you want so for me in my case hi eddie and then the next paragraph plus name because name over here is a dynamic name whatever the system is going to pull from the dynamic row and column three so you remember earlier on here on line 30 you have already set where the system is going to pull the name from so hi eddie plus name and you can reference back here so hi eddie next paragraph the name charlie long is approved to move to the next phase of interviews so here's the same and then plus the title so meaning the position that the person has applied for so it would be data analyst over here and you can see that it's also being pulled into the email body over here data analyst okay and then please contact blah 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 and then you can uh, end the body of the email with thanks or any salutations that you want to add okay that's the email body then the next function is to send the email so the mail app is used to send the email and then you can send to the email so remember this email is the recipient of this first email so you have already I, you have already told the system to send this email to bamhamas at gmail.com so when you call the function of email then it will send it to that exact email that you have identified then subject um, however you want it you can change it up and then HTML body would be your email body that you have crafted from line 39 onwards yeah all right that is the first email don't forget to save when you have made any changes and then we can run i will just do a quick check whether the thing works so for example i want bob jackson to move forward to the next interview then let me just go back here awesome yeah so i can see that hi eddie bob jackson is approved as a finance consultant and just cross check with my sheet over here yep it's correct okay then now we'll move on to the second email that i want to craft you similarly you are going to let the system know where and what do, where, where and what do you want it to grab from your google sheet so in my case i want column six to be the trigger and it needs to be true for this whole thing to run so Again, it is column six because one, two, three, four, five, six, column F over here is what I want um, to be checked. Then only the second email will be sent out. Okay, um, very similar to how it was in the first email. I'm going to identify the name, the title, the interview date and time. This is something that's added. So you can see that it is on column five with a dynamic row because Column 5 over here is where I'll be updating um, the date and time of the interview. Then um, I will be updating this email address as well to send to me because um, in this case, I am the hiring manager and I want to know uh, when the interview has been scheduled and what day and time is it. Then I will also want to get the timestamp, which is when... Um, the email has been sent out again we will be crafting out the email body in this case would be hi Avo. this person's name is confirmed for the second round interview at what time at what date and as um, 
whatever position that they have applied for and say thank you and this is the email that i will be getting okay let me just try it out over here i will be changing it to let's say 22nd of april at 12 p.m noon for example and um my secretary wants to let me know that a second round of interviews has been scheduled and you can see the email has been sent and when I go back to my mailbox and I can see that Bob Jackson's second interview confirmed and when I click into it, hi Ovo, Bob Jackson is confirmed at what day, what time as a finance consultant. Awesome, so this works perfectly. Okay, then and a little bit of add-on would be the timestamp column. You can see that on column G here is column number 7 is where I will be uh, putting, is where I have placed the timestamp of when the email has been sent out. It's just as a reference for my secretary who has already scheduled an interview and just want to make sure that the email has been gone out to me. You need to make sure that um, update the column, which is column number 7, with the timestamp. Because timestamp you have already um, told the system is the new date. Yep. Okay, finally, you will release the lock. And then last but not least, this whole chunk of code here, you don't have to change it. But it's just basically creating a trigger for you to run the code. Uh, this trigger is slightly different from the referenced um uh, trigger that you will be telling the system to reference to. It is something that you can see it's over here on the left panel when you say tri when you click on trigger. This one needs to be created. If there is no trigger created, you will not be able to run any code even after you save it, even after you run it, even if your code is correct, you won't be able to run it. So usually this is created manually. You can Go bottom here and you would change to on edit um, on edit and then notify you immediately if you do not have anything here you will not be able to execute any app script code using Google uh, on Google Sheets I have simplified the process of you manually going to triggers creating the man uh, creating the trigger by yourself all you have to do is to make sure you do not delete this chunk of code over here if there's none then it will trigger it, it will create by itself if there is already one then it will not create okay so when you duplicate this sheet like how i did in the first part of the video then you will not be able to use the google sheets um, you will need to be able to save it run it and then make sure that a trigger has been created it should create because I've already written down the code and then only you test out again. So I'll be linking in the description down below the link to this Google Sheet will be led to this page where you can down where you will get the link to the Google Sheet. There is no cost for this, but you can name a fair price, however you like, zero, one, two, three dollars. Um any contribution would be really helpful for me to maintain the current channel. And I will appreciate it. Um, once you download, you will get a link to the Google Sheet. Yep. I hope this tutorial will really help you in your automation journey. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to Avo Tutorials. Thank you so much and have an awesome day. Bye.